It's Houdini time. Let's jump in. Vellum glue. Vellum glue is a very useful vellum add-on node. It searches nearby points that are not a member of its own piece of geometry. It then creates a constraint between those points. Let's take a look at how we can use vellum glue to attach hairs to a vellum balloon simulation. In this scene, I have a camera set up, which I'm looking through, and I have an empty geo container. We're going to dive inside and we're going to create a torus. This is going to be our balloon shape. And so we can reduce the scale maybe by 0 0.3 or 4. And then we just want to rotate it just so we have a slightly better angle of view. Something like this is fine. And maybe we'll move it down just a little bit. And we can turn off this grid. We're then going to use a subdivide to subdivide it to give it a few more subdivisions. For now, we'll keep it something uh, low poly so that we can iterate more quickly. We'll then create a group node. We're going to set it to points. And this group is going to be called cloth. We'll use this group later. We can then configure a vellum balloon. And we're also going to use another vellum constraint. And this is going to be set to pin to target. In the cloth settings, let's update the bend stiffness to be something like 0.001, so it's a little bit more wobbly. In the pressure settings, let's change this to 10,000, and we're going to give it a rest length scale of 4, so it should expand quite a bit. And because we've lowered the bend stiffness, we get some nice wobble. I'm going to use this pin to target set to soft with match animation. I like to use this when I want to keep my object centered to where it originally started, but also to have the vellum property so that it doesn't fly off of the screen. And I'm going to set this to one. Coming back up to the torus, we're going to drop down a new stream. And first, we're going to give it some normals. So we can see now we have these normals that are pointing out and we need to change it to point normals. So we have these point normals pointing out and we're going to now attach our hairs to the torus. So let's create a line and our line, we can um, make it something a little bit smaller, like 0 0.25 and give it a lot more subdivisions like 15. This also needs to point along the Z axis. So when we plug it in, now we get a whole bunch of hairs. Perfect. What we want to do next is we want to create a group on the base point. So we can use a group expression. This is handy because it has presets. Here we can use the first point of primitive. And if we set this to the point group, we can um, relabel this root. And now we have the first point of each of our lines set in this root group. We can then create a group node and we can call this here. Turn this into a point group as well. This is just handy to have if post sim we want to separate the hair from the soft body. We can then create our vellum hair. And for now, we can uh, leave all the settings as default. We're now going to drop down two merge nodes and we're going to combine the geo streams and the constraint streams separately. We can then plug these into a vellum glue so that we have both the hairs and the geometry coming in. For the vellum glue, all we're going to do is we're going to change this to point groups and we're going to choose that root group. So now these root groups are the points that need to attach themselves to the soft body simulation. Let's drop down a vellum solver. We're going to jump up to four sub steps, remove gravity, and we're going to dive inside. We're going to add a pop wind. And uh, with this pop wind, we're just going to add a little bit of noise, maybe something like 0 0.5. And we're only going to affect the group that is the cloth. And the reason is that we don't want the hairs to be blown by the wind, but rather just to react to the movement of the soft body. You can turn this off and see which one you prefer. So now when we hit play, this is what we get. Let's take a look at some of the vellum glue constraint settings. The stretch stiffness is how much each of these constraints can grow. If we lower this value to 0.1, the constraint is allowed to grow a lot, but then it tries to maintain its original distance, so it shrinks back down. There's also the detach point chance. This is useful if you want some random hairs to fly away and not to be glued down. Vellum glue also has a breaking threshold that can be animated in a variety of ways that will break or release this constraint. Vellum glue can be used on cloth pieces as well. Let's take a look at 
this setup. I started with the grid. I set it to the XY plane and I made it smaller and reduced the rows and columns to two. I then remeshed it to a nice high res mesh. I used the copy transform to create a second flipped copy. I then add an attribute noise and I set the attribute name to break threshold scale. If we jump ahead to the glue constraint, you can see in the breaking section, we can scale our breaking value by an attribute. So the attribute noise will create some sections that are harder to break and others that break easily. After the attribute noise, I create a group of just the topmost points. I then use a transform on this group and I scale these points outwards. I create a vellum cloth and I change to set uniform with a very low mass. I use the pin to target set to my animated top edge and then I check match animation. I then use the glue constraint. I use the default settings except for adding the breaking threshold. I then add a vellum solver with four sub steps. I wanted to quickly go over another setup file that is included as it approaches the vellum setup slightly differently. So let's take a look at how I set that up. I first needed to create some vellum balloon pillars. I did that with simple modeling techniques. I used a vellum balloon with very stiff bend and pressure constraints. I then wanted to create spheres that I'd throw at the pillars. I did this with a simple sphere. Again, I used a vellum balloon. I increased the bend stiffness and the pressure stiffness quite a lot so they were more stiff and retained pressure. I then wanted random points to emit the spheres from. So I created a sphere and I clipped it to get only a quarter of the sphere. In my scatter, I used a small expression to emit one point every eight frames. I then also added an expression to the global seed so it would randomize the seed, thus changing the position of the point each time it emits. I added reference nulls after each of my streams so that I could easily reference them inside of DOPS. I then used a DOPnet. I find when doing more complicated setups, it's easier to set up a vellum solver inside a DOPnet as it's easier to customize. It's a really simple setup, but let's walk through it. I have two vellum source nodes. The first is bringing in my tubes. There are only emitting ones. I then have another vellum source bringing in my spheres, but notice I've changed the emission type to instance on points. I then add a reference to the points I set up. I use a pop attract on the spheres only so they are pulled into the center. I then use a vellum glue. The only thing I change is to create constraints to each frame so it is updating every frame. I then use a vellum solver and a vellum object as they're required by vellum to work. Glue is super fun constraint to play with. It opens up so many possibilities. So jump in, play around, it's Houdini time.